just an emerging artist, just sort of getting used to working with acrylic paints. I use a flow medium, so um, I think it's quite expressive. So it's something that I've been really drawn to because they use a lot of bright, vibrant colours. Um, it's been a very interesting process. a child I was always drawn to being creative like drawing was a huge part of my childhood and like growing up even in high school I'd somewhat just I'm sure everyone does they just doodle a little bit in their, in their books um, but any piece of paper like there was a phone book that um, cause my parents were quite, like mature so they had like just the paper phone book and I actually found it the other day and when I opened it up on every blank page, if it was like just one contact, there was some sort of little scribble drawing that I did. And so I guess it's sort of, it was a comfort maybe for me as a kid. I didn't really need the comfort, but it was just something I really enjoyed doing. When I first ever started um, getting creative was with watercolour from that cheap little, it was a gift, it was a little suitcase and it came with different like painting stuff so it was watercolour and, and the little palettes and pencils and textures and all these little things and the first thing, I don't know why, but it was just I was drawn to watercolour and even thinking back to all the like art mediums I had growing up, it was just watercolour. From the palettes to the tubes, I've always relied on watercolour. I think, I don't think I have it on my Instagram anymore but I used to have, I've sent some to you, like images of watercolour paintings I used to do. Just on rainy days like this, I would just sit and have everything set up and just paint from like books or images I would see online. Or I would go to different um, like parks and just take photos of like the trees because I just love the figures of the branches and the leaves. I never paint the leaves because that was just too complex to me, but just the just the forms of the sticks and that sort of thing I would paint down. Um, I just sort of just opened the doorway to that acrylics in high school. I started to touch with acrylics, and then yeah, just as each year went on. It's definitely something I've learned along the way. I never really, I guess I'm sure everyone's gone through it, but I went through various different career changes. Like I wanted to be a vet, I wanted to be a chef, I wanted to be a teacher. And I, at the end of every single year, moving on to the next, I was like, I'm not doing that. Um, but I guess coming into the industry, even now I'm sort of like, I don't know if I'm going to be an artist or if I'm going to be a teacher or if I'm going to be an art curator. I st I'm still not sure, but I'm sort of just letting my journey take me somewhere. Um, for now, I guess being an emerging artist is a pretty interesting title because then I get to just experiment with different techniques and, you know, let my practice take me on this new, this new journey. Um, trying to plan art in my experience has been somewhat impossible because I can't control what I do. I can't really justify how it's done. It's more like, like it sounds so artsy fuzzy, but I sort of just let my intuition take over what I'm putting down and then that there tells its own its own story. Um, so to think like I'm going to be an artist um, tomorrow, I might not be an artist tomorrow because it just depends on where my art might take me. My art might like just stop, and then I might become more interested in a business, into a business sort of form, and then I'll go into that direction, and then be like, oh, that was fun back when I was in uni. It was a great thing to touch on, but now I have this drawing to business. Um, so I don't know, it's all just I'm sort of just letting it, letting it go. I'm trying not to really think too harshly as to, you know, well, I'm going to be an artist because I might not enjoy what the process that's coming now, so, yeah. When I first started, so if we stick with the, like, the, the flow medium, when I first started using that um, medium, I just wanted to know how it worked. So um, I just wanted to know how to manipulate it, how I was going to be able to control it. So I would have no idea. I would just think, I'm, the only, I guess, perhaps idea that drove an artwork would be colour theory. So like, without making a mess, what colours would work or complement each other. Um, <clears throat> so for example, like if, 
I look at my paint and go, okay, um, I think orange and pink work pretty successfully together and then depending on their tone, so like if the, the pink is more red and it's a darker tone, that orangey yellowy colour is going to stick out on top of that. So um, I'll try and mix that in and then try and just manipulate how those colours are going to work and then their mark then becomes the work. But lately I've been thinking more well, what's my drive towards making just a pretty picture with a couple of paints. So lately it's because I've been looking into colour theory, I want to get my emotions to select my intuition, which I've sort of already been establishing on, but taking it further. So if I'm angry, then what draws my colour um, psychology, what draws me to what my anger draws me to what colour. So in some cases, like people are going to think, oh, you're angry, you're going to use reds. But not necessarily, it just depends on how angry I'm feeling or even what drives that anger. So what drives me to the, a different particular colour palette. And so um, putting that sort of like those um, calculations together and creating something that's purely just a, an expression. I guess the best way for me to create a body of work is I have all my tools laid out. So I'll have my surface and then Although it's a lot of paints, because I always work on the floor, a bit of a Jackson Pollock sort of move, I just lay out all my colours and then that way it's accessible. So after I've laid down the first colour, I'll look up and then my intuition will go, go for the green or go for this one. And then it's just a complete process where I literally just look up and my intuition will then pick the colours. I always if they're like, oh, I know that purple doesn't go well with that green. But if my intuition says grab those two and put them together, I'm just going to grab them and put them together. And I think a lot of that gets shown in my works because it's you see like from the different marks with these different little like windows and patterns and this sort of thing that just I don't know they all have their own little characters to them. And something I enjoy too in that process is because I don't necessarily have a particular drive for it that people can then have their interpretations when they look at the works. It's their own. Like my, I, I will title my works as landscapes because that's what they are. So like imaginative landscapes and then people will then attach their own enjoyment, their own experience. Like someone realistically is probably going to look at it and go, my five-year-old can do that. But it's, okay, how would your five-year-old do that? You know, like, you know, even if you look at it like, is it a negative experience that you're feeling? It's an experience. So you are somehow manipulating, not manipulating, but you're somehow being a part of that work. Like it's quite intimate because I do a lot of my works by myself and so like especially unlocking my intuition and letting that happen to then have an audience or to have someone stand there completely changes it. So like from I guess a normal pair of eyes, although it's really a normal pair of eyes, to have someone look at me painting they'll be like oh you're just making a mess on a surface. But to me that's a quite an intimate thing because I'm I'm opening up myself that I wouldn't on a daily basis. That's a completely different like I guess aura of me when I'm painting. Um, um, so like you know I'm letting my in, inner I guess my inner being go around and make make these decisions. I in my normal day because I'm very structured. I'm very like okay I'll do this and this and this and this and this. But my practice is very different. It's very yeah intuition based. Where I'm just going to grab this and I'm just going to do that. Recently is just been acrylic paints and chalk pastels. It's been something interesting. I used to experiment with it in the diploma. Mm. I did like we did life drawing. So there was something about like having the freedom to just make these marks or how just like one smudge could just justify it, like say like your form, like just doing the whole human form just by just smudging something. Just, I love it. It's also structured. If you something I don't know, just Because I've always relied on my imagination, and I probably still do now, um, having the freedom, I guess to me, my particular works, um, 
they're landscapes of my imagination and there is no like realistic sense of how imagination works so to be able to um, express myself without being figurative and without having like this realistic way of there, being able to I guess abstractify that's not even a word but I'm going to use it anyway um, what's in my head and actually bring it to the real world and to have it seen as abstract is something I really enjoy because there is like I could say like this is my imagination this is what it happens in my head but it's to someone else going to be realistic like it's not a solid like this is exactly what's in my head like it's not it's not a real form not that I'm saying abstract's not real like that's not what I'm trying to say but um no I think I just I really enjoy the freedom of interpretation that abstract art can allow with different paintings and creations and like looking at like Jackson Pollock like people look at his works as mess and like how he did it like his technique it's an abstract technique like it's completely different to how you would traditionally paint like um, like portrait wise so have like standing up and or sitting down and being at an easel and painting to how he would do it on the floor and just or even stand above it and like it's a completely different orientation so um yeah just having that freedom to just that's all it is like abstract just gives you that freedom to just either express yourself or just to be different that's what i really enjoy about abstract art i don't know i don't like having favorites but if i had someone i'm really i guess enjoy viewing art a lot of is Mitch Goiber. He's a resident artist and I guess we have sort of relate to his work maybe again because I have an intuition towards or have this inner connection to growth or this you know attraction to nature and to growth and I guess because he's an artist who is very passionate about the environment and with wildlife I guess I'm drawn to his practice in that way. There's that connection there. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's such beautiful works. And because he was someone, because there is a video on his website about, about him, and he was just like all of us, just having an ordinary life. And then he found art, and you know, look at him now. He's making, he's selling, he's creating beautiful works, and he's not just keeping the money for himself, he's actually doing something good with it, and he's donating to all these different. Um, charities and like it's amazing. Usually like how I'm going to answer questions now. It's just so yeah. Next question. It's getting deep now. For mediums, um, can't English today. The flooring medium, flooring medium <laughs> of the pouring medium with the, the flow.